going on YouTubers? My name is Robert Serrano Jr. and I am the Natural Born Thriller. Welcome everyone to, for a long time, this WWE Raw Review, the show from August 20th, 2018. They were in Brooklyn, New York at the Brooklyn Center. Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Jonathan Coachman as commentators. And this was the Raw at the SummerSlam. Or should I say the Raw at the Summer Scam. And also, uh, what comes to this Raw episode, this was, um, Raw is Scam. But I'm going to run through it right now. So here we go. Hour number one, we open up with Roman Reigns, the new WWE Universal Champion. He comes out, and he, pulls up, he holds up the title belt. First, he looks at it, and that he's got the smug look on his face. He's looking like a... Uh, an entitled douchebag because he's uh he he uh you know he, you know, you got the, you know, you you you, you, you got these fans booing the, the limit hell of Roman Reigns and and he's smiling about it because you know no matter how many how many times they boo him they give him a reaction and where whenever, whenever they give him a reaction doesn't matter if it's negative or positive though he's gonna push them he's, they, they, they look at they look at that as a, a he's just getting a reaction and that's that's a good thing. So, he goes to belt up in the air, gloating that he's the champion now. You know, that, that piece of shit, ugly, red period ch championship belt. That, uh, with him winning that belt, lost his prestige. And, and to even prove it even more, you know how he always, uh, you know, carries the, um, the United States Championship belt when he won it, and then he carried the Intercontinental Championship belt when he won it? Now he's doing the exact same thing with the Universal Championship. When he was the E champion three times before, he didn't do that. When he was the um, attacking champion with Seth Rollins during his, their, 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 their first times, their first runs as a Shield, he didn't he didn't do that. Now all of a sudden, with Roman Reigns being the uh, you know, when he won won the United Championship belt, carried it like a backpack. Um, and being the current champion, carrying like a backpack, and finally winning the Universal Championship, carrying like a backpack, like like uh, that's supposed to, like, that's supposed to look cool and all that, right? No, it's fucking dumb. It's fucking stupid. It, his, his character doesn't ca call for that. And what and what is his character? What is Roman Reigns' character? What 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 can someone do that that stupid shit? He he he's, he's got no swag. He's not cool. He's not a badass. He's boring. He's garbage. He's shit. And with him being the Universal Champion, like what, like what Brock Lesnar said last year to a Roman Reigns, um, during during that that Raw episode. That Roman Reigns don't deserve shit, and, th and that's exactly how I feel when he, when he with the way he carried that belt right now. He don't he don't deserve that belt. He don't deserve shit. And, it's, and that's a fucking fact. But at the same time, whatever. So yeah, Roman Reigns, carry, carry that belt like that all you want, because you're proving me right about how the belt has lost its prestige, and the way you're carrying it like like that. Like, like it's a piece of trash because because you're a piece of trash. So yeah, basically, I I had to I had to see for myself how he's gonna carry the belt, and I was right. I was right about him carrying that belt like, like that, even though that's supposed to be on um, WWE, you know, in, in WWE's eyes right now, the main championship belt, which is fucking bullshit. The main championship belt is the WWE championship belt that AJ Styles is wearing it right now. So fuck WWE for that, and fuck Roman Reigns. And as far as his promo, I didn't give a fuck about his promo because he's just standing there with a smile, a smug, and, and, a, and a time and look on his face, like like he like he's um somebody, like like he's like like he is like he is um the shit. Well, he is he is the shit. He's the shit factor of professional wrestling next to John Cena. And I didn't care what he had to say. But I did hear what he said. He had, he had, what he had to say, though, yeah, I, was, I kept skipping it. Uh, and for those who didn't see my live reaction of it, um, that's when I heard. Uh, well, actually, I, I read, I read, I already been to the match too, though. But um, but I need to hear uh, how how this was played out too. So I didn't like I said I didn't, I didn't listen to it that much. But uh, I, I, but I did reading reviews and watching some some uh, some reviews from other other people. Um, Roman Reigns said he's, he's going to be a fighting champion and he's going to um, give this person that never has. Had the opportunity to become, you know, to go to the, the Universal Championship title for a long ass time. In Finn Balor, 
So, and this this story is way to on the scam fans to uh you know to uh, to get behind Roman Reigns, and the scam fans are thinking that that uh, Finn Balor was gonna beat Roman Reigns for the title, even though Roman Reigns just won it against Brock Lesnar at, at SummerSlam, or should I say some Summer Scam. So Balor comes out to confront uh Roman Reigns um I I. I, I, I remember, actually, I don't remember if he did or not, but but Baron Corman came out and says, "No, that, it's not gonna happen." And the Karango says, "No, I think these fans want want, want this to happen." And then the fans bought, fall into it because they're fucking sheep's. Every last one of those fans, I fucking hate these fans. By the way, I don't know how many I don't know how many times I gotta keep saying this. I don't know how many times I gotta keep saying like a broken record. I hate these fucking WWE fucking fans. Baron Corman versus Bobby Lashley. Match itself, I didn't care for the match, but Bobby Lashley won. Moving on. Uh, Paul Heyman backstage to confront Kurt Angle about Brock Lesnar's um he wants to his uh, do a his rematch clause, and Kurt Angle was like, "Oh, well, Roman Reigns being champion, that's not that's not gonna happen, and it's not gonna happen anytime soon." So, so much for that uh, for rematch clause there, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, all, all night, yo. Kringle kept saying that Roman Reigns um, is a fine champion, but Brock Lesnar is not. Because Brock Lesnar, uh, for being Universal Champion, for not being there because he's a fucking part timer, that means he's not a fine champion. Then that means you got uh, you have to call The Rock that too. You got you have to call you, have, you also got to call Triple H that too, because th th those two were part timers and they became WWE champion. What the fuck? That, that that makes no fucking sense. And I guess Pete Dunne, who's the WWE uh, United King Champion. Who doesn't defend that belt that much on, on NXT or on the other e programmings because WWE doesn't do doesn't do that much anyways. But I'm, but he's not a fighting champion too, right? It's fucking bullshit. Do you guys say you also gotta say the same thing with Nikki Bella? Nikki Bella um very defense her Divas Championship belt at the time. Trish Stratus, uh back in 2005, she was injured. Well, well she actually won it on in 2004, but but in 2005 she got injured, and she and she she, she was the women's champion, and they and they, they didn't take the belt off her. No, wait, wait, what's it, what's it, no, actually, um, I, I take that back, it was 2004, my apologies. 2004, um, Trish Stratus was hurt, um, and, and she, uh, you know, and, she, and you know, she was hurt, you know, and, and she was the woman's champion, and they didn't take, take the ball off her. So, yeah, that means you gotta call her, you gotta call Trish Stratus, uh, not a fighting champion either. I fucking hate that fucking mentality. Roman Reigns is not, to, to me, Roman Reigns is not a fighting champion. Because, because he fucking sucks. Uh, I didn't see the part where Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle backstage. Because I skipped it. I, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize I skipped it anyways. But, also we, we get to a, um, i trying to remember, oh yeah. We get to a video package of Triple H versus The Undertaker that's gonna happen in Australia, which is called a Super Showdown. So basically, the WWE is, is um is um forget you know, well, actually they're not forgetting it. Um, they actually it was actually mentioned on the show though. But um basically, they're, um, they're going back on their words about Triple H and Undertaker's match uh from from 2012 end of an era was really not the end of an era. Well, I'll get to more of that later too. Uh, Ruby Riot, uh, Liv Morgan, Sir Logan, you know, the Riot Squad versus Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Ember Moon. Match itself, I didn't care for the match not much either, but I do have to say one thing. Sir, Sir Logan, what the fuck was that? Sir Logan um, was going to take a, um, a, a heat seeking missile by Ember Moon, you know, the, uh, the, the suicide dive that Austin Aries always does, the way he does it. Uh, and Ember Moon does it too, and so does Kira Hogan, and, and so does um, Carmella. Um, but anyways, so she's doing. So Ember Moon's doing this, that, um, this, the heat seeking missile, and Sir Logan, she didn't fit into it. Like, what, what are you doing? Come closer. You, you, you could have got. You, you could have seriously. Uh, Ember Moon got hurt there, dummy. But in the end, Riot Squad won the match. Ruby, Ruby Riot uh, got the win over Sasha Banks, and people are. Uh, some people are upset that um, the Ember Moon got it. Yo, know, was dropping, you know, because she, she was, uh, she was, and, and, and that, 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 um, and that, and the losing stick, all uh, because of that. Uh, like, well, she, she didn't take the, she didn't take the pinfall, but at the same time, I do, I do get what you mean, though. 
Um, but yeah, Ember Moons, um, ever, ever since being uh, on the main roster, what, what has she done lately? Um, and there you go. Wrestling in hour number one, two matches. Raw is scam. Hour number two. Let's see, where is it? All right, here we go. So hour number two, <clears throat> excuse me, Triple H. He, co he comes out, and he also he's now babyface. Really? So Triple H comes out. He cuts a promo saying about how NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four was a was a yo know, was a uh, show that turned the house down, which I, I do agree. With. And then he said that SummerSlam took it to a whole new level. No, it didn't. SummerSlam was fucking trash, in my opinion. SummerSlam was a, was a fucking scam. NXT, NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four was not a scam because because guess what? They gave us what we wanted. Summer scam didn't give us what we wanted. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe they give the the bow the bow drillers what they wanted, but not not us hardcore wrestling fans. So I say to myself, wait a minute, you're telling me that SummerSlam took it to a whole new level? How? I I don't know how. The main thing that we wanted to see at Summer SummerSlam was not was not the main thing that we wanted to see. And again, it's not Triple H saying this, you know, that it, he's following the, the promo, the, the script, whatever, you know. You know, WWE scripted promos on the main roster. I wish Triple H was just tore up that, 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 that script like he did you know, back in the days when he was um, terrorizing, terrorizing um, um, you know, uh, from the 2000s and 2003. The reign of, you know, Triple H just reign of terror at the time. You know, I'm the game, uh, am I going over and uh? And then, and then the, the creative writer was telling him no, and then he, he rips it up. And then um, the writer has to uh, you know, redo it, and then the writer um, gives, gives him a new one, and the like, I'm the game. Uh, am I going over or not? And then he says yes. And they said, good, uh, here you go. That's Triple H. He just hands the script over, he, he, he didn't even bother reading it. But I'm pre but uh, because this um, pr um script, he he had no problem reading that one because he he gets to be himself in this one, and he, and his and his on the promo he also, he also got two. All right, what you say about you know, someone saying taking the whole new level? Bullshit. But anyways, so Triple H uh cuts more of a promo about um uh, how Australia wants Triple H to compete as um you know as uh super the super showdown. That's gonna be in Australia, and Shubhas, uh, uh, you know, agrees to it, and he says, um, also, you know, for Australia, um, would you, would you, I mean, would you, um, would you like to face the Undertaker, you know, and then Shubhas was like, no, I don't, I don't think I should, and then he starts cutting a promo about, uh, you know, he want, he wanted to leave as an end of an era between Shubhas and Undertaker and all that, and then Shubhas starts cutting to his, um, he's a game promo and everything, and then he's like, you know what? He said, "I he said I agree, I, I agree to it. I'll I'll I will, I will go against uh, Undertaker at, at um at, you know, at Super Showdown at Australia." And then he says, "Yo, uh, the error is back to like that. I don't know." So basically, we're get we're going we're, we're gonna have this match again between Triple H and Undertaker. This time, no hell himself, no Shawn Michaels being the referee. And by the way, which by the way, by the way. The match, the match between Taker and, and and Triple H, that was back in 2012. How, so how long, how long was that? Like, well, what? Five years ago? Well, close enough. Six years ago. Uh, I'm not that good. I'm not, I'm not that good math, anyways. But um, yeah, that was six years ago. Look, look what happened six years later. And Triple H mentions this too, by the way. You know, Triple H. Uh, well, um, you know, he, he uh, you know. You know, since last time uh, we wrestled, you know, he wrestled against uh, Undertaker and all that. Undertaker, um, you know, the streaks ended and all that. Uh, but I'm surprised he didn't mention, you know, that uh, Undertaker. Um, oh yeah, he actually did mention this too. That he took off, he took off his hat and his, his, um, his, his trench coat, his gloves, and all that, and pl placed them there. And, and, he, and then he says to Undertaker, to you know, to um, to put back, put back on again. That's him as a women. He did that already. Against John Cena. Did what? What the fuck? 
Like, what the fuck is he talking about? Undertaker did put his hat back on. He did put his trench, trench coat back on. He put his glove back on. We went, we went up against John Cena. Did, did, we, did, we, did, we not, did we not forget this year's WrestleMania? And then Triple H talked about how, you know, uh, since that that day too, that he became uh, uh, an executive, so like that, you know, wearing a suit and everything. And then, uh, I'm surprised, and I'm surprised he didn't mention that he had, he had he had to get a haircut, you know, you know, he got rid of his long hair. Um, yeah. And here's another thing too. Here's one thing he didn't mention, which I'm, I'm glad he didn't mention this either. Undertaker, he's not the same. He's he's not the same Undertaker anymore. The Undertaker is, is, is a shell of himself now. He's got a hip replacement. He needs injections to, up to his um into his knees, you know, just legs to his legs, whatever, so that so that he can he can he can walk. You know, he, he can you know walk properly. Not not saying he, he he can. I'm not saying he can't walk because um without, without any injections. I'm just saying Undertaker's not in his prime anymore. Undertaker is bloated up. He's got a a, a gut hanging out uh, with his um you know his leather pants that he wears with what comes from wrestling as the Undertaker. He's not the same anymore. So what I'm, what I'm basically trying to say here, um, this is just because it's short. What I'm basically trying to say here between Undertaker and Triple H, um, when it comes to the match at Super uh, at the Super Showdown at Australia, it's gonna be trash. It's gonna suck. Triple H can still go though. Undertaker can't go anymore. Look at look at him. Did we did, that, did we not remember the last match that he had at the Great Royal Rumble against Rusev? He had to all hold onto the ropes. You know, because he was almost he, was, he almost fell down because he was striking Rusev in the corner. He almost fell down. He he shouldn't be doing this anymore. He needs he needs to retire and stop trying to try to wrestle. He can't do that. He can't do this anymore. So yeah, but am I am I am I going to watch the show? I am. So I, I can cover it right here on YouTube. And who knows? Maybe I do a lot of reaction to it as well, to prove my point too. Just, just that one match. But that's the match that they're going to be selling. This going to sell these uh, to these WWE fans to uh, to buy the network and to uh, to tune in to watch Triple H and Undertaker one last time. That's what that's what Triple H said too. And there you go. Um, Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. Drew McIntyre at ringside. Seth Rollins at ringside. Uh, match so was pretty good. Dean Ambrose hit a nice dirty DDT. Not saying that he hooked it on right, but it was nice DDT the way it was done. And then at one point we have, uh, you, know, be, you know, before that happened, uh, Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins uh, got in each other's face. Drew McIntyre's like, I dare you hit me, and all that, right? So like, they start fighting and all that. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah they, basically what I'm trying to say here, uh, Dean Ambrose uh, had a match against Dolph Ziggler, and Dean Ambrose won. I think it was Dean Ambrose's uh, return match here, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually it was. It, uh, it was. Um, Braun Strowman confronts Finn Balor backstage and says to him, "He's not a coward who's not going to, uh, you know, attack people from behind." What comes to, um, you know, his money bank contract. He says, when, "After the match is done between Finn Balor and Roman Reigns, he's going to be right there to, to pick up the bones." You know, I don't know. Uh, to, to me, it makes no sense what Braun Strowman is doing, the way he's doing this and all that. So whatever, it is what it is, right? Uh, it's, it's not a scam for the either. Or the, for you think that it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a cash in. We'll, we'll get to that later, by the way. You get to Eli's concert. This time, his guitar didn't break. Uh, and then we get Kurt Hawkins to end the, the rough. And Kurt Hawkins says he's going to end his, uh, uh, his um, what, 190... Oh, I'm sorry, his 219 loss by trying to beat Elias. And Elias is like, you know, you're a loser, you're a born loser, you're going to die loser. And <laughs> just like all these people in, in Brooklyn and all that. Um, and the Kurt is like, you know what? Stop hiding behind the guitar and behind your skirt. I mean, yeah, not skirt, um, scarf. And let's let's do this right here, right now. So Elias, Elias finally accepts the challenge. Match was short, uh, but I thought it was uh, all right for what it was. And then Elias wins. So yeah. So the um the the um the defeat, you know, the defeated streak of Kurt Hawkins continues on. This not nice two hundred and uh and twenty um and uh well because of losses basically so. Uh, I missed this part, but Taz O'Neal backstage with Apollo Crews and Daniel Brooke. I heard about the, the promo backstage. To be honest with you, I really, I, I really don't care anyways. It's to be these, um, you know, childish uh, promos anyways. Whatever. We got Autos of Pain, Edgar and Razor versus 
Titus Worldwide. Titus O'Neil and Paulo Cruz are being accompanied by Dylan Brook. Uh, all I gotta say is LP wins. No, 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 to say about the match. Wrestling hour number two. Two matches. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, three matches. My apologies. Now for hour number three. I need a little break there. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's get now. Let's get to hour number three. Oh fuck! I forgot about this. Stephanie, Mc <clears throat> if I can spit it out, Stephanie McMahon, and she's got the entire women's uh, surrounding surrounding the ring. I'll, I'll tell you who it is. It's um, Nikki and Brie, the Bellas, Alicia Fox, Alexa Bliss, the Riot Squad, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan. You know the clumsy Sarah Logan who almost um, hurt Ember Moon. Speaking of Ember Moon, she was there too. Sasha Banks, Bailey, Natalia. Basically, it's, it's this whole uh, Ronda Rousey uh, championship coronation will come to be her being the Raw Women's Champion, the new Raw Women's Champion. And, Stephen, and basically, when Stephanie McMahon was current promo, I skipped it. I didn't want to hear her because I knew what, what it was going to be about. It was, it was going to be Stephanie McMahon once again taking credit for something that, that she had nothing to do, to do with. She's fully taking credit for Ronda Rousey's success in WWE right now. She's fully taking credit of the women's um, uh, revolution, that the women's revolution that um, that's, that's, been, that's been going on uh, when AJ Lee was still there. And then the whole, whole women's revolution thing uh, with NXT, when it comes to Paige and Emma, and Emma you know, Tania Dashwood, and then the whole thing with um, Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and um, Bailey. She's always there to all uh, to take the credit, the credit that, um, that that she had nothing to do with. Because she doesn't give a fuck about these women. She don't give a fuck about the women's division. Because if she did, she would have done something about that a long fucking time ago. Like I said before. I never heard anything about her saying... You know, I never heard her saying... Uh, you know, basically, I never heard anything back um, back, back, back in the days. That oh, she was she, she was she was, um, she was involved with that. She, um, when it comes to the women's um, division for WWE. E even um, in the actual era. She had no... She, 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 she had no part... She had no part... She had no... Um, no say. She had not nothing to do with the women's division of of the WF slash the WWE. She didn't because she don't give a fuck. She, she's an entitled uh uh daddy's little girl, billion dollar princess that gets er that wh wherever she wants from her daddy. And you wanna know why she, she didn't get involved at, that, at the time too, by the way? Because she's fucking garbage. She's not uh, a genius. She's not a creative genius. Because she's been she's been um she's been raised by uh, a a a seventy two year old piece of trash who only um conditioned her to uh, to do only sports entertainment segments and, and bullshit instead of worrying about the fucking wrestling. Instead of worrying about the um the true talents to put over uh, as, as the top guys. So fuck Stephanie McMahon. Yo, basically, fuck Stephanie McMahon what she's got to say there because it's just her trying to take credit for what for what, um for what these women has done. So Ronda Rousey comes out. And Ronda Rousey talks about um being women's champion on uh, and all that. Stephanie McMahon trying to uh you know to leech on that on that success again. Like that she always does because she's a fucking leech. She uh she's like uh, her husband, Triple H, where Triple H uh, always thinks that he's the guy, but he's not he, he really never, he really was never the guy. He was just a guy working with the guy. And that D you know, when I say the guy, the guy who's more over than Triple H is. Like a Stone Cold Steve Austin, like a Mick Foley who's mankind, Captain Shack, whatever you want to say, like a, like the rock. A Jeff Hardy, a CM Punk, a Daniel Bryan, a Undertaker, a Shawn Michaels, a Brock Lesnar, you name them. A Randy Orton, a Batista, a Eddie Guerrero at one point, a Chris Benoit. Hell, even a Ric Flair. And now you got Stephanie McMahon, who's, who is the woman who's working with THE woman. 
And that woman, that that D woman right now is Ronda Rousey, who's now the Raw Women's Champion. And also at the time too, when it comes to Trish Stratus, Alita, uh, I won't, I'm not gonna say Sable because Sable wasn't wasn't that uh, good of a wrestler anyways. Uh, I thought she was decent, but but you know, yeah, I, I get my point there. Um, so yeah. That's that's what Stephen McMahon is to me. So Ronda Rousey says, basically, on your call on Stephen McMahon's um um what um games on that right? You know what comes to um you know, what comes to her scheme? You know her 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 scheme um how that how that diabolical uh scheme whatever you know. And then she says that she's not Brock Lesnar. Ronda Rousey saying this. She's not Brock Lesnar. And I say to myself, what's that supposed to mean? What do you mean you're not Brock Lesnar? She's she's like, uh, she's gonna be a fighting champion. who's gonna be there every week. Oh, so you're gonna defend the title every 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 week on Raw? Then okay, I'll hear about it. I'm not gonna watch it anymore, but I'll I'll hear about it. We'll see we'll see, we'll see if that is true. Other than that, I don't want to hear anything about Ronda Rousey saying that she that she's a fighting champion if she's not there every week. Yo, what comes from defending the, the Raw title? So basically, this is the first week so far. Ronda Rousey didn't defend the title. I mean, she could she could have defended the title on that night, but still doing this whole uh, championship coronation, which I thought was fucking trash because Stephanie McMahon was 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 a big part of it. Um. But yeah, Ron, Ronda Rousey saying that she's uh, not Brock Lesnar and all that that fucking triggered me. Because for for main for main reasons, because this this WWE once again of their fucking agenda saying that Brock Lesnar is not fighting champion because he's not there every week, it's their fault that they put the belt on him, and on top of that, they, it's their fault that they, they agreed to the terms to give him a part time contract anyways to show up and uh, wherever, wherever um he uh, you know they told him to, to to show up. This is fucking bullshit. Brock Lesnar is not fighting champion. Anyways, so Stephen McMahon trying to stir things up again, trying to shit up to the pot. What comes with um, you know, some of these women that Ronda Rousey is here to uh, break her arm, and then Ronda Rousey says something about, "I'm not gonna break your arm. I'm not gonna break their arm unless they they ask for it on that, right? You know, what comes to, you know, you know, pushing her buttons." Oh yeah, I forgot to mention too, Mickey James. I think Mickey James was there too, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember if she was or not, but whatever. Um. So then. Seven McMahon gets uh, tossed by a rag do uh, like a rag doll by Ronda Rousey with the um the gypsy drill, and then goes to put the armbar on Stephanie, Stephanie, you know, Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon gets hurt and she rolls out of the ring like like that was horrible acting by the way, fucking horrible acting. What comes her uh, her uh, rolling out of the ring after get her arm, but right, whatever. I thought it was trash anyways. Was you know was Stephanie McMahon being there anyways? The B team. Well, that's the curse Axel. They cut a promo. And what comes to your theme song? This is this is my, my new way to uh, the um to do a, a parody of the the, the the B team's theme song here. B team, B team, trash, trash, trash. You know, instead of a B team go go go. It's B team, B team, trash, trash, trash. But anyways. They cut a promo about being raw Titan champions, whatever. Uh, then we get the revival coming out. So we get um Curse Axel and um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that, that that didn't happen yet. We get Scott Dawson versus Bo Dallas, while with Curse Axel and and that's rather at ringside, meant to say. I just thought, I thought I thought it was okay, but it was hard for me to, to, to really concentrate on the match because you know you got these idiot WWE fanboys, these, these idiot WWE bubble dwellers in the crowd doing the fucking wave. I say to myself, wait a minute, why are you doing the wave? This match is not that bad. It's okay. It's all right. It's not. It wasn't boring. I went. It, it wasn't boring. And these cross 
they, 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 they was just they, they want they, they just want to be part of the show, put you know you know want to um go go in, in business for themselves and do the fucking wave. Fucking fucking disrespectful fucking punks. Making making uh you know people like me from from this from from, from Brooklyn look bad. Thank God I wasn't in that in that crowd on on that, on that Monday. But at the same time, I still had to be in in, uh, in in the crowd with um New Day fans on on that on that Tuesday night. I'll get to that when I do that when I uh, get that review up. So. Dawson, yeah, Dawson wins the match. By the way, after the match, Kurt Axel cuts the promo and says he wants to challenge uh, Dash Water in the match. And then all of a sudden, they get the match uh, on the way in for that one too. After after, after the course break though, and then you get the fans doing again the wave again. Like, what the fuck are you are you there for? To watch a wrestling show or to do a fucking wave like fucking shapes? I want, I want, I want everyone here. These, 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 um, these fans that go into WWE shows are wrestling fans. You know, and they're going to be doing fucking waves like that, and you know, in, in the middle of a match. Fucking try hard, motherfucking geeks. Uh, and this match was okay too, by the way. I thought it was uh, for what uh, you know, even though it's uh, a short match. But in the end, uh, Dash Rider wins. And then after the match, B Team cuts a promo. Well, both that was basically saying that um, we're still, we're still the tag team champions, even though they were in one on one separate, you know, respective matches. One on one respective matches. Whatever. Ro oh yeah, Roman Reigns was backstage with Renee Young because Renee Young, Renee Young interviewed Roman Reigns. I didn't watch it. I didn't care for it. I heard about the. I heard about it though. But I'm just gonna leave it as that. Uh, I also heard about this too. I, I, I saw two backstage, but but then when I saw when I saw Stephanie McMahon there, skip. But Crane was backstage with Stephanie McMahon after getting hurt from her arm. Alexa Bliss is there, kiss, kissing the ass. Constable Corbin is there. Stephanie McMahon tells Crane to take a vacation because Baron Corbin is gonna be the acting general manager for, uh, because Crane didn't come out there to help out Stephanie McMahon because, yeah. After what you did with Ronda Rousey uh, during the, your WrestleMania build-up, what do you expect was going to happen to you uh, by doing this coronation with Ronda Rousey at, in the ring? How's that Kurt Angle's fault? Whatever. But that is this lets Kurt Angle uh, not, not being on, on the show. Because I, I, I heard he's going to come back uh, you know, to wrestle full-time for WWE. Big mistake, by the way, because you know, Kurt Angle's not in, it, it, it also Kurt Angle's also is, is a, a former show of himself, too. But whatever, right? Uh, Bobby, it won't surprise me. It won't surprise me if he has been um at the show at, at, in Australia, you know, the Super Showdown. I don't know if he has or not, but we'll see. I don't think he's been booked for that show yet, anyways. But we'll see. So yeah, Baron Corbin is the new general manager, well, acting general manager, until whatever, right? Um, and he's still he's he's still gonna be wrestling too, by the way. Um. Which I don't know how that even possible. I mean, a crank, a, a crank couldn't, um, you know, do two jobs, general manager and wrestle, you know, at the same time. Then Baron Corbin can do it, whatever, whatever. Main event: Roman Reigns defeats Baron. No, no, I'm sorry, not not Baron Corbin. Well, it's gonna happen in the future, probably. But anyways, main event is uh, WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defeats Finn Balor. I didn't watch the match. I didn't care for the match because because I was part of the SmackDown show from for yeah at Brock the Brockley Center in Brooklyn. Uh, they sh they showed basically they basically showed a replay of, of the match, but but the um but the end the end tail of the match though, where Roman Reigns was distracted. Finn Balor was going to uh, go for the win, but uh but then Roman Reigns goes for the spear, and Roman Reigns gets the win. Raw is scam, and and these fans that. That they were cheering at the time that they wanted to see this match where Finn Balor's going to uh, get the belt off of Roman Reigns. Well, y'all been scammed, y'all been fooled, y'all been played like like a um a bunch of 
retards. So yeah, Roman Reigns is still Universal Champion, even though he just won the belt uh, at SummerSlam against Brock Lesnar. Do you, do you did you guys really think that Roman Reigns was going to um, lose that belt against Finn Balor? After, yo, know, WWE has been doing this whole thing where Finn Balor has never uh, got his rematch for the, for the Universal Championship belt, and that Finn Balor uh, is the first Universal Champion and all that, and he never lost it and all that, and he, ne he never got the rematch, of, he never got his rematch and all that. You really think that Finn Balor was going to win that belt? Off of Roman Reigns at the Roman Reigns uh defeat Brock Lesnar for that Universal Championship belt. After all this this build up that they did with Roman Reigns Roman Reigns to finally finally you know to finally put that belt on them. Do you really believe that Roman Reigns was gonna be the one? I mean, did you really think that uh, Roman Reigns was gonna lose that belt to Finn Balor, just like that? And yeah, yeah, if you ever really believe that, yeah, you guys more gullible than you ever have been. So, Braun Strowman, oh, I forgot to mention this too, by the way. Uh, Braun Strowman was there. Uh, you know, Roman Reigns Trump was, was going for the win. And then that's what led to the, the distraction for Roman Reigns. But for Braun to, to take advantage. But then it didn't matter anyway because Roman Reigns still won. So, then Braun Strowman uh, goes to cash in, right? Because Roman Reigns at this point uh, was done. And then all of a sudden, the shield comes out. That's, you know, with uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. From the stage, though. Not, not from the crowd, but from the stage. I say to myself, well, there's no scam there. No cash in. So there was no hope. There was, there was no um, way that Ro that Roman Reigns was going to. Either way, there was no way for Roman Reigns to lose that belt, anyways. He just won it. But the Shield beats up on Braun Strowman and, and it took him out. He, 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 did, he did fall back a little bit, but then it, it got caught up by Roman Reigns with his spear. And there you go. That, that, was, the end, that was the end of that. Now I didn't watch the sh I didn't watch the raw the um, you know the main event, the full main event because I don't care for it because I I knew Roman Reigns wasn't, wasn't going to lose, I knew Finn Balor wasn't going to win that belt. I'm not I'm not because I'm not I'm not I'm not a gullible WWE fanboy, who who uh, who falls for it every fucking time. I'm I'm sorry that's just the way I feel, about these fans. Tolomar wrestling for all number three. Three matches. Uh, talking about wrestling overall for Raw, for, for WWE Raw, or should I say Raw is Scam from uh, August 28th, uh, yeah, August 20th, 2018. Um, eight matches. As far as my overall showing for the show, I'm gonna give it, uh, I can't give, I can't give it a zero, but I'm gonna give it a three. Given it, if I give it a four out of ten, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna give him um, a little bit a little more of a credit for that. But no, three out of ten, I'm giving it. I enjoyed some few wrestling matches and all that, uh, but there were some segments I didn't I didn't care for, and on top of that, I just I just thought the show was lack was lacking. Um, yeah, um, three out of ten. It, 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 um, it wasn't a uh, to me. I, I didn't think it was a bad show. I thought it was uh, average, but that's all I gotta say for that. But there you go, there you go. Thank you all for watching. And this is your first time watching me. My name is Robert Strand Jr. At your born filler. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, just thumbs down. The choice is yours and yours alone. So that being said, you all take care. All right, good night. Peace on the streets. See you all soon. But for now, I'm out.